President Trump is addressing one of his more controversial tweets. You may be asking yourself which one. We're going to remind you. He posted this message at the end of last month. In it, the president referenced looting in Minneapolis and said, quote, when the looting starts, the shooting starts. Twitter flagged the tweet for glorifying violence. And here's what the president had to say about that tweet in an interview with Fox News. It means two things, uh, very different things. One is if there's looting, there's probably going to be shooting, and that's not as a threat. That's really just a fact, because that's what happens. And the other is if there's looting, there's going to be shooting. And it's also used as a threat. It's used both ways. So, Nicole Killian has been following this for us. Uh, Nicole, you're in New Jersey near a golf course where the president is spending the weekend. Um, so, he was questioned about that phrase, when the looting starts, the shooting starts, and the origins of that phrase. And he got it a little wrong. What the president have to say? Well, look, his response to this was similar to what we heard uh, shortly after he posted that tweet about two weeks ago, which is that he says that he's heard the phrase over the years uh, many times. Uh, in this particular instance, in this interview, uh, the host asked if he was aware that uh, that phrase originated with a former Miami police chief back in the late 60s. And he said that he actually heard it from the former mayor and police commissioner of Philadelphia, Frank Rizzo. Now, I will point out that the Philadelphia Inquirer notes that there is no record of Rizzo ever using that specific phrase, although uh, certainly he is known to share a similar mindset and certainly has a checkered past when it comes to uh, racism and police brutality uh, in the Philadelphia police force. Uh, so uh, that being said, uh, you know, that was the president's response uh, to uh, this specific answer. But again, really uh, no different than what we've heard from him before. Yeah, and Nicole and Vlad, yeah, just to as you remind people that, uh, you know, Mayor Rizzo, before, before that, co Police Commissioner Rizzo, was so disliked for his heavy-handed tactics that, you know, this month, the city of Philadelphia removed his statue and painted over his mural. Um, so I'll just put that out there. Like you said, Nicole, uh, very uh, similar tactics to perhaps the uh, police chief in Miami, who is the one that is credited with saying that phrase. Yeah, it's a very weird response to that question, Emory and Nicole, because whether it's this racist police chief in Miami in the 1960s or Mayor Rizzo, who has, as you say, I, I would agree that checkered is a polite way of uh, describing um, his administration, uh, both as mayor and as police commissioner with African Americans in Philadelphia, doesn't make it any better. So uh, the remarks still stand as something that uh, left a lot of people, um, you know, sort of scratching their heads and saying, what is the president? In implying here, and why is he using, whether it's Rizzo or whether it's this uh, mayor back in Miami, um, it, it doesn't matter. It's still uh, the way that it's been reported by a lot of people, something really horrible to say about American citizens. And the other question I have for you, uh, Nicole, yesterday the president announced four steps that his administration is planning to take um, in response to the death of, of George Floyd. Um, what can you tell us about those? Yeah, and just to your point, uh, you know, obviously with the president's response, as you mentioned, it doesn't really clean up the answer right. You know, the sentiment still seems to be the same, and there's no apology there from the president. Uh, what the president did try to do yesterday is uh, kind of outline some steps forward uh, when it comes to the issue of race and policing. So he outlined uh, four specific pillars, uh, including uh, more economic development for the minority community, which he says would be uh, a way for for instance, of increasing capital to small businesses. Uh, that is one approach. He also talked about addressing health care uh, disparities and investing more in medical institutions that serve minority communities. He also talked about working on an executive order uh, that has yet to uh, be enacted, uh, but one that would encourage departments to reach professional standards uh, when it comes to the use of force, uh, for instance, using uh, tactics such as de escalation and finally, the fourth pillar uh, would be enacting a school choice. Uh, he says that it's important that kids should be allowed to go to the schools that they want to go to uh, and that having that uh, competition uh, is healthy and important.
So next Friday, the president uh, is going to be hosting a campaign rally in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And uh, the date and the location has been drawing criticism. Um, Nicole, give us a little bit of a history lesson as to why people might not may think that his timing is off and his location is off. Yeah, well, this one certainly had a lot of folks <laughs> scratching their heads uh, for a number of reasons as far as the timing is concerned. Uh, you know, obviously, in the African-American community, uh, June 19th is a more commonly known as Juneteenth, and this is often an annual celebration to mark uh, and commemorate uh, the end of slavery and uh, when slaves heard uh, the reading of the Emancip Pro Emancipation uh, Proclamation uh, centuries ago. Uh, so from that standpoint, you know, there's that, but then there's also this location of Tulsa, Oklahoma, which we're now uh, nearing uh, almost 100 years uh, since one of the worst race riots in U.S. history, where hundreds of uh, blacks were murdered uh, in this massacre by white mobs. And so uh, this is the 99th anniversary uh, of that event. And so, uh, you know, to do this rally in Tulsa on Juneteenth uh, really uh, had a lot of African-American leaders and lawmakers in particular uh, very critical of this decision, some saying that it was disrespectful. Uh, I think Kamala Harris probably had the most uh, pointed response, uh, saying in a tweet, this isn't just a wink to white supremacists. He's throwing them a welcome party. He, of course, uh, referencing the president. And now the Trump campaign uh, did respond. And, uh, you know, they say that the president has a record of success uh, for black Americans, uh, that uh, Republicans are proud of the history of Juneteenth. Also, I would note uh, a Republican official uh, tells us that uh, the president uh, was well aware of the significance of both of these events. The president did respond to this also in that same Fox interview that we cited earlier. He was asked, uh, if this rally uh, was scheduled on purpose to coincide with all of this, uh, to which he replied no. Uh, he went on to say that, you know, people should think of this and this upcoming rally as a celebration. All right, Nicole, thank you so much.